Whew, remember when I made a video a couple days ago saying Valve should release Steam OS? <laughs> well, they are actually doing it, ladies and gentlemen. As of March, it seems like you and I might get our first chance at playing around with Valve's actual operating system on our computers. And lo and behold, you know when March comes around, I will be making a video on how to ditch Windows, install this, or actually, if you want to be a little bit of a bi-curious person, I'll teach you how to dual boot it, why not? But I want to get people into the world of Linux. Now, I've always said when it comes to Linux and the amount of distributions that exist on the market, uh, you really need to have some level of brand power, okay? Trying to tell the average gamer, hey man, just install Ubuntu, just install Arch, just install Manjaro. Like, if I start listing off random names to you, you'll probably want me committed. But if it's one name gamers know, it's absolutely Valve or Steam. No matter how many other, like, launchers come into the market, like Epic Games or really anybody, it's always Valve with Steam that pretty much reigns supreme. Now, obviously, I don't have to really remind people, I love the Steam Deck, okay? This is probably one of the best handhelds that I've ever owned in my entire life, and it's probably the one device that I've put hundreds, if not probably a thousand hours into at this point playing numerous games. My amount of gaming, whether it be emulated, whether it be playing titles that are in my backlog, have started to finally progress ever since I ended up getting my hands on this. Now, when it comes to PC gaming, I don't really enjoy sitting at my desk playing a video game unless it's like a game that really warrants it, like Cyberpunk 2077, because I really wanted to crank the visuals up there. But generally, I play a lot of RPGs, so I am totally comfortable with running games at 30 frames per second at 800p just if I can play it in a cozy manner. Whether it be in bed, whether it be on the couch, whether it be away from the computer, I don't mind playing games portably. Now, it's one of the reasons why Nintendo Switches are probably some of the most sold systems is because alongside just docking it to a computer, I'd wager a lot of people just love playing it on the handheld. They like playing a bit of the game and then just pressing the power button, throwing the switch aside, and coming back to titles like an hour or two or a day later. That's one of the beauties of portable, like, handheld gaming. And it's one of the reasons why tons of these devices have started hitting the market. Whether you look at St Steam Decks or Rogue Allies, or more importantly, my new favorite device, the Legion Go. Now, I don't play this thing as much as I play the Steam Deck just because I don't really like the input on this. I think Valve has probably made the best set of input, like the trackpads. You know, I don't know why any other company doesn't copy this entirely. I don't know if Valve has a fucking patent, but I feel like any company that wants to implement these trackpads always fucks it up somehow. Like this, they have this little weak trackpad on the bottom, which is kind of annoying to play with, but, you know, I'm going off on a tangent here. Probably the best input available, probably some of the most easiest to use handheld PC gaming you can find. But this isn't a slouch, it's stronger, uh, and generally the screen looks a lot nicer, even if it's not OLED. I've been playing a lot of games on this device, even emulating a lot of stuff, and uh, you know, until I installed Bazite, which is just SteamOS unofficially, Onto this, because it ran Windows, it was an absolute miserable device. Uh, using the Windows interface without it being properly optimized is annoying. The fact that hitting the power button meant that this thing would wake up, and especially when I stick these things into a backpack and the fans are running, that is a recipe for disaster. But ever since I installed Steam, I can hit the old power button, device fires up just like my Steam Deck, and lo and behold, I'm back to playing shit Ghost of Tsushima anywhere I go. Like, look at that. Look at how smooth that baby runs. It's like butter. <laughs> but of course, the Legion Go is a device that apparently has sold pretty well. And it sold well enough for apparently the Legion Go to have a successor device come out, the Legion Go S, which is powered by SteamOS in the first officially licensed third-party handheld powered by those SteamOS people. So Valve posted this, and they basically showed that at CES 2025, they basically are shipping another handheld, not them, Lenovo is, but Valve is putting their operating system on this device. So we built this operating system to provide a seamless user experience optimized for gaming while retaining access to the power and flexibility of a PC. SteamOS is the same operating system we run on the Steam Deck, and the team is making updates to ensure it fully supports the Lenovo Legion Go S and provides the same seamless customer experience. Now the reality, of all this is, is importantly, they've also said that ahead of this device even coming out, they're going to be shipping a beta of SteamOS. 
That means you too can eventually very soon download SteamOS and not just install it to a handheld, you probably are able to just install it to any desktop device you have. Now, again, I wanna just straight up say for the record, one of the big things ended up coming out was that they're shipping this device alongside a Windows version. So according to Lenovo, gamers can pick between a $499 SteamOS version with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage, or a $599 Windows version with 16 gigabytes and one terabyte of storage. Now, this is a pretty important aspect. I've always pretty much been under the assumption that Linux needs brand power. Getting people to install random distros is probably never gonna be palatable. But if you start bringing something with the brand image of Steam as Steam OS, I'm sure that will convince a lot of gamers to maybe give this more of a college try than if you just recommended them a standard, regular Linux distribution. Uh, Valve is gonna put a lot of care into making sure this installs smoothly and runs as well as a Steam Deck eventually at some point for the average user. Now, I think the price is really the most important part. If it's one thing you haven't been noticing is that for the first real time, I've noticed at least, a product is launching where Steam, or Linux rather, is releasing alongside Windows. Now, if you go to Best Buy or you go to a lot of stores, one of the things you'll notice very much is that there really isn't any Linux laptop or desktop that is selling on the market. Nobody is selling any desktop or laptop with Linux baked in. Usually the only other option you get is maybe like a Chromebook. But this is huge. For gamers, a $100 difference is probably enough for them to go with the SteamOS version as opposed to the Windows version of this device. And I'd wager that obviously for anybody in my audience watching, if I asked you, would you buy a $500 device or a $600 device? I think if most people told you that your games for the most part will run on that $500 device, people will probably go for the $500 device. In fact, I would also assume that people would probably go with this device and install Windows if they wanted to just to save the $100. Now clearly there is a storage difference, so I don't want to pretend that this is entirely just Windows licensing fees. Obviously you are paying a premium for more storage, but Windows licenses cost money. And unless you're completely psychotic and you purchase your keys instead of going to the lands of GitHub, uh, I would imagine most people probably are going to go for that SteamOS version. And if you want to install Windows, God forbid why, you can choose to do that down the road. Now, honestly speaking, this is a pretty huge thing because like I said, Linux releasing in any capacity like this never used to be a thing. And I think this is really gonna be the point where like the actual war begins, right? Like the actual way that Linux starts to become more and more mainstream and more and more people start using it, you know? Look, the market share right now is admittedly, uh, you know, a single percent, if that, you know, you're looking at just the single digits. But again, a trend matters when 2% of the market uses Linux, and then a year later, 3% uses it. And then a year later, 4% uses it, especially in the world of handheld PC gaming. And ultimately, the most important part is, is down the road, again, remember, down the road if companies who don't support Linux right now as of today, if they notice this trend growing, they're gonna have to start supporting Linux alongside Windows just because you are missing out on actual money and actual users at that point. So this is a pretty important thing that Valve is doing, actually bringing the heat and actually bringing competition. And I hope that Microsoft brings competition too. Like if Microsoft brought a handheld Xbox with the Xbox user interface and made it as simple to use as the Steam Deck, this is actually a perfect time for competition, especially when you see two juggernauts going at each other's throats like this. When they do that, and they do the best they can to provide a good user experience, that is the best for you and I, the actual consumer in the process. Obviously everyone knows this, it doesn't really have to be stated. But yeah, it's a huge deal to actually see this happen. And as somebody that wants to support Linux and wants this entire platform to grow, I have never been fucking happier to see this happen. Even alongside SteamOS, there have been huge advancements in Bazite, for instance, where like you can run versions of Bazite's GameOS feature where you can turn actual desktop hardware into a console. And now that started to evolve into NVIDIA. For instance, recently these guys made it so that Steam's interface, which famously did not work well with NVIDIA, work with NVIDIA in a beta capacity. So honestly, there's a lot of advancements going and the actual war between both of these uh, like, you know, operating systems is actually ramping up. 
Again, I am totally excited to see things like feature parity occur, and the only way that I can see anybody in the mainstream even consider switching to Linux is when you make the entire process as easy as possible. Look, I'm not here to promote videos where you're getting into the weeds of using Linux as an operating system. I understand most of my community uses Windows. It's pretty much the entrenched nature of the platform. And the thing is, if I want you guys to consider switching over, I want you guys to switch with almost 99% of your interface as intact as it can be. That means you switch over to Linux and it takes you literally no time at all to get going. It has to be like riding a fucking bicycle for the average consumer to even stick with this process. But yeah, Valve is releasing SteamOS sooner than I ever expected. And you bet that I wanna be covering this as soon as it comes out because yeah, I do like this. I enjoy handheld gaming. I enjoy Linux. I enjoy it when there's actual competition in the space. And right now, these handheld PC gaming devices and Nintendo Switches have revolutionized how we play games so much that they're all selling like hotcakes. And now it might be the only actual way that Microsoft starts losing some of its actual monopoly in this space. People finally have a fucking choice. And that I think is the most important aspect of it. There is finally a choice brewing and that choice now involves Linux. I think the only way forward from here and the only step is that Valve convinces enough companies, enough publishers, enough gaming developers to start looking at how popular SteamOS is becoming and especially for the multiplayer crowds, right? Maybe convince them to open up their anti-cheats to support Linux. Or maybe SteamOS might be the only option where it secures a chain enough where you can actually play certain games only underneath SteamOS that use things like anti-cheat. It's just another choice. People can choose to go down that road or they can choose not to. But when you start removing these actual hurdles one by one by one, you make it so that down the road, people don't really have to think, I need Windows because I need Windows. It's because down in the future, once you start reaching these parodies, people will have to pick Windows if it actually proves its worth. Because if Linux is there, people finally have a choice between actually you know, having an operating system that now respects their privacy, one where they can actually know what's running under the hood, one where they can control exactly what's running under the hood, and one that's not controlled by one singular company entirely. Remember, SteamOS is not entirely a Valve project. It's the culmination of not just Valve, but even Microsoft, NVIDIA, tons of big companies, small creators. It is one of the largest open source projects. And honestly, if we're getting to a world where that open source project may one day, maybe not in my lifetime, but if it starts getting to maybe 10, 15% of the user base through this, that's all I would be comfortable with seeing. But ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar. I wanted to talk about this because I am passionate, I like Linux. I like the way computers work. I like the way open source technologies work. And I like the way that people are going to use technologies that allow people to have more control of the hardware they purchase. But yeah, if gaming is the way in, then fuck it, I'm all on board. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it, I am out.